Hello YouTube, Steve here with Hunting Tactical. Uh, I just wanted to do a quick YouTube uh, Saturday morning video with Sarah and I uh, about a build I just got done with here. Uh, so I apologize about any cartoons in the background or any having to cut in and out. Uh, doing this kind of in true YouTube fashion. So I have here a Remington 7400 chambered in a 30-06 that I recently acquired. I just got done with this build last night and I'm uh, going to go over kind of what I did with it. So when I got the gun, it wasn't in bad shape. Uh, I've only fired four rounds through it just to make sure that it worked. Uh, you can see here, it came with a wooden stock, wooden forearm, pretty plain Jane gun. Uh, I know a lot of people talk about these things uh, jamming up a lot, uh, having a short life expectancy, you know, but uh, I acquired it, so tried to make the best of it. It seemed to work so far pretty well. Uh, so get right into what I did here to start with I took off the wooden stock and uh, the receiver is in 20 gauge 870 uh, size for the stock So I didn't have any of those stocks and uh, I wasn't gonna buy a new stock uh, being that I'm in New York and it's a semi-automatic with a detachable magazine So I couldn't really do a whole lot with the stock uh, or else it would become an assault weapon didn't want to do that with a deer hunting rifle. Uh, so I had this 870 12 gauge stock uh, kicking around that I had taken off of my 870 and replaced with an ATI uh, folding tack light. So that was a few years ago. This thing had been just kicking around for no reason. To uh, my wife's dismay, I came up with a use for it. Uh, so it's a synthetic stock. It's got a nice recoil pad on it there. Um, came off my Express Super Magnum. The one thing I will say about this is uh, don't lose the bolt that comes with your 870 stock for the 12 gauge because the bolt that came with the gun was a little bit shorter than is needed for the 12 gauge uh, and like I said I've had this off for a few years now no idea whatever happened to the bolt that held it on probably find it someday and go oh that's a really neat bolt um, but uh, so I had to replace it uh, and the bolt is about 11 and a half inches long a little shorter than that but it's quarter 28 thread yeah quarter 28 so not something that hardware stores carry in stock I had to order in a piece of threaded rod that uh, was about three foot long cost me three dollars and change um, and I put some never sees up here in the receiver so because I don't want that bolt to ever or that threaded rod rather to ever seize in there and then I double nutted it down here at this end um, we'll see if it holds up uh, to make the change from the 12 gauge to the 20 gauge I've got a Mesa tactical uh, adapter here one thing about this there's a shim uh, that goes in here on the factory stock you have to leave that shim out or else you end up with a gap right here uh, so this doesn't this already accounts for that shim uh, Moving up. I've got a APA uh, Scope package here. This was uh, one of their uh, Discontinued models. I uh, got it on, on clearance uh, So I probably won't post a link to it. There's plenty of uh, three-in-one scopes and stuff out there on huntingtactical.com uh, They've got a, it comes with a red dot here uh, I don't remember the actual brand of the red dot. I know I use them on a, a couple of my HT60s. Um, I don't know that I would have gone with that as a red dot for a 30 6 but it came with a package, so we'll see what uh, how it works and how it holds up. I went with the red laser, and I went with that because I'm going to use this for uh, deer hunting and some summer nuisance deer hunting that I do for some of the farmers. Um, you know, so they, they shouldn't be able to see it. I mounted it on this side because originally I wanted to put this flashlight on the other side. Um, but I learned that really won't work. See, it kind of hits. Um, and the flashlight wasn't as bright as I had hoped it would be. It was 40 bucks. Uh, comes with a nice, you know, thumb activated, uh, switch. Um, not a bad light. I tried it out uh, with the dog the other night and uh, I could see the tops of the trees. I could light up some eyes, but not really bright enough, especially for shooting deer. Um, so the scope, uh, when I got the gun, it had a Tasco 3x9 on it. 
um, and it didn't even have the right weaver mount I found uh, on it but uh, those 3x9s they're great for mid-range um, and a 30 out 6 a lot of guys will say is a mid-range um, but I didn't really want that for this gun I wanted some things for you know uh, uh, quick target acquisition which is the red dot I got the laser there as well um, you know so I have the the 0 to 100 range and I know with my brother's 30 out 6 I've reached out 350 yards uh, and shot deer with it no problem um, so I wanted something that I could really reach out with so this is a 4x12 um, I, you know three three on the task go I really don't think that's a, a meaningful magnification you can't really get quick target acquisition with it um, and you always just end up bumping it up to four nine doesn't really reach out far enough you know like i said great mid-range if you want to shoot one to two hundred yards but i wanted something that gives me the ability to to go out a little bit further um i have here a magazine from buymymags.com uh, they don't have any 10 round mags for this gun on huntingtactical.com maybe we'll try and get them onto the marketplace um, see if I can zoom in and get a little better lighting for it here. The thing about this magazine, if you look down here on the, the factory four round magazine, is it has this little button for the bolt release. Uh, this magazine does not have that. So there's no way to actually lock the bolt to the rear with this gun. Um, not sure I'm a huge fan of that, but I don't think it'll be a big deal. The magazine does go in and out with the bolt closed, which I do like. Um, so I think that'll, that'll be all right. Moving on to the forearm here. This was a part I was really excited about, uh, and, uh, was probably the most expensive part of the build. Uh, actually, I know it was the most expensive part of the build and, uh, part that I'm actually rather the most disappointed about. Uh, this is from Accuracy Systems. Um, I was hoping to be able to invite them onto the platform for Hunting Tactical as a, as a vendor, um, but it didn't go so well. They got a lot of nice stuff on there. They do uh, some custom gun work and things. Um, they're about the only ones that sell a real uh, tactical foreign for this. They make it in several different options. You can get a half rail on top. Uh, you can get different uh, pick rail configurations up to a quad rail. I opted just for the full rail on top. I have pick rails I can put on there if I want to in the future. Um, so I saved myself a little bit of money just by going with that full rail on top. But didn't realize uh, that just because it's on their site doesn't mean they have it in stock. So I was really excited when I ordered it. And uh, like in an hour I had a tracking number and it said it would be delivered in two days. Four days went by, no uh, forearm in the mail. So I sent them an email. I'm uh, worded the wise with any vendors, so a customer sends you an email, send them an email back. Because I got a phone call back. Uh, and uh, you know, then he, I had to give him a call because I didn't, didn't take, get the call. Um, some tag back and forth. And essentially he was out of stock. I had to wait for them to build it and then ship it out so what turned into would have in two days turned into had in two weeks so yeah i wasn't uh real happy with the the service and the business model there uh not sure i'm going to be inviting them onto the platform just yet uh getting into the actual forearm itself um when i got this gun it was really dirty inside not the worst i've ever seen but it was definitely dirty and there's a guide rail down in there see if i can get this to uh focus in there kind of see it there you go uh that was pretty rusted up in there um so i had to clean that up with some 600 grit uh, sandpaper uh and what i don't like about this and i'm sure yeah, it's free floating, uh, so they rave about increasing in accuracy. Um, I'm sure it probably does, uh, but from a field perspective, not uh, the greatest design here. Um, you know, if you're competition shooting, probably not the gun you're going to be using anyways. But I'm sure it does, uh, you know, in increase the accuracy for that. Um, but just look how open it is, and the biggest disappointment was looking how open it is at the end 
as a field gun, not good. A lot of moving components in there, um, and it mounts to the receiver up here. You can kind of see there's a couple of screw holes there and there's a couple more back under here. So in order to actually get this whole thing off, you've got to dismount the scope, which means reciting in. Not good. Um, but there are these little screws here, um, and there's a whole lot of them. So if you really need to, without taking the scope off, you could take that off, drop the lower end off, and get into the thing. Um, but it really lends itself open to getting uh, debris inside of there. So what I did was I cleaned that, that rail up and then I coated it with molly grease uh, because I really wanted to you know, reduce the, the wear and stop the rust from coming back because there was some pitting going on in there. And then I took the rest of it and uh, I used this uh, Otis grease. I got a sample of this at uh, the SHOT Show this year. So there's your plug, guys. Um, we'll see how well it works and you can kind of see I coated everything else in there um, with some grease so, because I don't want to have to open that up for normal cleaning very often. So I, I coated that, I coated the slide rails, everything that was underneath that forearm got a, a good thick coat of grease. Um, help keep it lubricated, help keep uh, debris from damaging stuff hopefully so not sure this is the greatest forend for a for a field gun um i will probably end up in the future coming up with something to kind of cap that off with i mean you can see it doesn't even go you know use the end bolt that uh, was on there which i was rather disappointed with um, because it did have a, a sling swivel on it um, and i was hoping to be able to use that um, but it sticks out like out here if uh, you, you stick it on with no forend. Um, the bipods here, I have, this is a UTG bipod. Uh, it's a little short. It works okay for prone position, um, which is why it's on there. That and, you know, kind of sticking it on a table and be able to show it off for displays and things. Um, that's a, a rail mounted bipod and I put a rail on here the nice thing this when you don't get the rails option with this forehand is it comes with two sling mounts built into it um, so I used one sling mount I have this uh, adapter here this turns the sling mount into a rail system it's about that you know that long um, and it gives you a sling mount still there um, so I use that to put the UTG uh, short bipod on there and then this is a Harris uh, Model H bipod. It mounts on the other sling mount. Um, I got this because, I'm, like I said, I'm gonna use this as a field gun. I do a lot of sitting in my uh, Alps Mountaineering uh, weekender. It's a little flip up kind of stadium style seat that I sit right on the ground in the field with. This is 13 and a half by 23 inch, which will work really well for being able to uh, sit down and shoot so and the nice thing is this is the 22 inch version of the the 7400 um, so I'm thinking it's probably late 80s um, you know and because of that it lined up rather well with that that model H bipod um, if I had an 18 and a half inch carbine version you know it would come back down here somewhere and the bipod would stick out past the end um, but this really worked well the last part that I put on here that I'm really excited to test out is this muzzle brake from Control Solutions. Uh, being here in New York, uh, muzzle brakes are legal as of 2017. They are still legal. Um, however, threaded barrels are not. So I had to go with this clamp-on muzzle brake. You can see here it, it literally clamps onto the end. We'll try and get a, a good angle here. So you gotta put uh, some never sees, and there's some videos out there on how to install these. I'm really not gonna go through that. Um, but one thing that uh, Jeremy from Control Solutions had in his instructions, and you know, I wasn't too keen on, uh, was he said just eyeball level it. I really disagree with that. Um, so uh, you know, I've got a level here. You can pick these things up for like two bucks at Harbor Freight. You really need to level that thing that gas pressure has got to be really equal um, to have the the best effect 
on it. And then, you know, he said, oh, make sure that it, it's lined up, you know, uh, up the barrel because it's clamp on. You can essentially misline, misalign that. So one of the tricks that I did with that uh, was I, when I installed it, I put my bore slider through it. Because that way the bore slider went down into the barrel and made sure that this thing was lined up. So I'm really excited about this. The videos that I, and reviews that I saw about this muzzle brake showed about a 60% recoil reduction. Um, or perceived recoil reduction as they say. You know, you can't actually reduce it. It's just how it feels. Um, so I think with that and the butt pad in the rear, I think this is uh, going to turn into a real nice gun. I know a lot of guys say oh, it's a 30 out 6 be a man about it, but you know what? It's also semi-auto, and so you're gonna, if you're going to really use semi-auto, you've got to get a good a reacquisition of your target, and reducing the recoil and the muzzle jump, that really helps with that. Um, plus, you know, I'm about to go sight this thing in. Uh, if I shoot, you know, I got about, I think, 80 rounds for it. If I shoot 50, 60 of those, I don't care how much of a man you are, a 30 out 6, 60 rounds, you're going to know it. Um, but I will say because it is gas powered, when I fired it with the factory stock and stuff on it, it, uh, it wasn't too bad. Um, but 60 rounds and you're going you're gonna to notice it. Um, so yeah, that is my review here of my build for my Remington 7400 chambered in a 30 out 6. I've updated it, modernized it. Um, hopefully this will be a nice little field gun for reaching out, you know, two to 300 yards uh, and shooting some white tail. Um, and uh, I will go through and, uh, like I said, I'm going to sight it in. I'll go through and do uh, some shots of how it uh, shoots as I sight it in and how much uh, recoil reduction we really get, how well this forearm really holds up. Um, being that there's going to be pressure on it from the bipods and there's no real support back here um, It really just goes on here, which was a very tight fit. I will add um, Gary with his instructions, you know, he, he his instructions for mounting this were four steps um, And only two of them really mattered and uh, so Yeah, it needs a little bit of work on how to write instructions for assembling things you know i went to put that on i hadn't you know taken this one off but never essentially put it back on um you really have to give it a, a good slap down i ended up taking a, a scratch all and having to kind of jimmy it in there really pull it down to align those holes um he does say use some uh blue loctite i didn't have any handy so hopefully that's just a uh a cya in his instructions but uh we'll see see if they start coming loose um, but, uh, yeah, so that is my build on my new Navi Remington 7400. Thank you.